Have you ever had something happen in your life that completely changed your life forever? If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, even if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you could admit there, there are some things that happen in your life that are like, wow, this is something substantial that I need to pay attention to. Everything happens for a reason. And some things are very clear. Other things, not so much. John MacArthur, in a sermon, recounted the 125 yards that changed his life. A lot of things change our lives, and I want to share this story that John MacArthur shared from the pulpit. The sermon was given uh, probably in 2018, and the link to watch the whole sermon will be in the description of this video. John MacArthur talking about an event that changed his life. And after he shares, I want to share some stories from my life and also give you kind of a, some guidelines as to how you, we should look at events that happen in our lives. Does everything have a message to it? Uh, some things are very clear what God wants us to do. And he allows these things or he causes these things to come into our life so that we might make adjustments and changes and such. And MacArthur had such a such a event, and he shared it from the pulpit. And so stay tuned to the end. I'm going to talk about the Builder Summit a little bit, and I'm going to share with you some guidelines in helping us interpret the events that happen in our lives. So here's Pastor John. Thank you, folks, for allowing me the privilege to be here with you today and for the opportunity to share in worship and to open the Word of God. I have some uh, um, skin in Alabama. I mean that literally. When I was um, 18 years old, I was driving through Alabama with some young people, and uh, the driver rolled the car. And I was sitting in the right front passenger seat, and as the car going about 75 miles an hour down a highway, near a little town called Utah, Alabama. Uh, the car flipped in the air, my door flew open, and I fired out of the car. I was ejected, and uh, it was amazing because I was fully conscious. I hit the highway going the same speed as the car. The car flipped over, to the, my door being opened acted as a right angle kind of brace, and the car just ground down its roof as it slid down the highway and into a ditch. And I was going right alongside the car on my southern hemisphere um, at, a, at a really rapid rate. Um, and uh, fully conscious, I watched the car go into a ditch. I didn't know exactly how to stop, not having been in that position before. So I did the brilliant thing of putting my hands down. And you can see the scars today. Um, I tumbled a little bit, took skin off both shoulders, elbows, and knees. Um, when it was all over, I stood up and walked off the highway without a broken bone. But I had left most of my back, and that's the skin I have in Alabama. <laughs> I lost a large part of the skin right on down to the deep tissue. Um, Third-degree burns over most of my backside from that skid, 125 yards or so. Um, walked off the highway, stood on the side of the highway, and uh, I had an amazing thought. Uh, Lord, uh, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. <laughs> if you're going to play like this, I give. <laughs> it was right on that highway in Alabama that I said, Lord, I'll serve you any way you want me to. If it's a small ministry, give me the grace to do it and be satisfied. If it's a larger ministry, give me the humility to do it. And I committed my life to ministry there. I was a believer, but I was toying with the idea that I thought I might want to be an athlete, even on a professional level. But the Lord got my attention. I had my own uh, Damascus Road experience. So whenever I come to Alabama, I am reminded of that, and uh, 
there was a guy who came along the road and started picking up the other kids from the car. None of them were injured. I was the only one. The Lord exited me and dealt with me and left them alone. He got me to a Birmingham Baptist hospital and uh, tried to take care of my burns and shipped me to California. Uh, I thought um, I, I would be able to recover faster than I did. It took me three months in bed to get the burns healed up. And during those three months, the Lord sealed the call of my life to preach His Word. It all happened in Alabama. So whenever I come here, there's a, a moment of deep, deep gratitude for what the Lord did for me on a spiritual level by throwing me out of a car when I was 18 years old. All these many years, being able to preach His Word is joy beyond comprehension for me. And when it comes to the Word of God, I'm always drawn to the person of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is the anticipation of Christ. The Gospels are the incarnation of Christ. The Book of Acts is the proclamation of Christ. The Epistles are the explanation of Christ. And the Revelation is the glorification of Christ. It's all about Him. And if I only have one opportunity to speak to a congregation like this, and I assume that everywhere I go because I usually don't get invited back. <laughs> I want to talk about Christ. And we've sung about Him, haven't we? And I want to take you to what I think is the richest chapter in the Old Testament. And that's a teaser introduction for the sermon. He goes on to preach on Isaiah chapter 53. Um, so I encourage you to go watch that sermon. Link in the description of this video. Have you had a Damascus Road experience as Pastor John has? I'd be interested in hearing your comments below. I had a thank the Lord, right? <laughs> thank the Lord for working in Pastor John's life when he was younger to guide and direct him where exactly where God uh, had determined he him he should be. And you know, God is in control of all things. I believe that firmly. And he uses means to get us to where he wants us to be. He brings uh, the scriptures to our viewing and to our reading and um, to our memory. And he also uses events to guide us. Now, how should we interpret those events? Pastor John interpreted his, I believe, correctly when I was younger. About the same age as Pastor John when he had that accident, I had a minor motorcycle accident in which God used in my life where I was, I was, it was a very similar experience. Like, okay, okay, I'm trying to decide whether to go to uh, Word of Life Bible Institute and study the scriptures or go to auto mechanic school. And um, I kind of knew that I should go to Word of Life Bible Institute. And I uh, wanted, and I really wanted to, in the flesh, go to this secular school with one of my friends where we would not, who wasn't a Christian, wouldn't have been a good experience for me, wouldn't have helped me spiritually, but, but I was being stubborn. And God brought that situation into my life where immediately I'm like, okay, 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 <laughs> whatever, whatever you want me to do, I'll go to Word of Life. And I will seek your will, how I, how I will serve you for the rest of my life. And um, again, I'd be interested in hearing your stories. If that has happened to you, it doesn't, these events always don't lead into full-time ministry or to Bible school, I'm, I'm sure. But I also want to warn you as to um, trying not to spirit, over-spiritualize everything. I mentioned that I went to Word of Life Bible Institute in 1985. 1986, I was on Word of Life Island, and one of the summer camp, it was, it's an island camp for teenagers, and I was a counselor. And one of the weeks was uh, basketball tournament week, and teams from all over the country uh, came to compete in basketball. 
and I was a counselor and one of the coaches just over spiritualized everything. If they lost a game, it was the devil attacking them and God, God was judging them or God was dealing with their sin. And I just thought, well, what about the other team <laughs> that beat you? Like, does that, does that mean that they're God's more happy with them? And I was trying to explain and as best as I could that some things happen for reasons that we don't understand. Some things are just to help us grow. Um, some, so everything happens for the good of us, the believers and for God's glory, but we don't always know exactly why. And we sometimes over spiritualize things and it's a real careful balancing act uh, because we can't, it's, you can't go through life looking at every situation is okay. What is God saying uh, through this? Every, what every situation it's very difficult and can cause you great confusion and frustration. God has told us what his will is for us in the scriptures. It's very clear. Um, and we ought to obey his commandments, share the gospel with others, be faithful, love one another, and don't, necessarily over spiritualize everything your your car accident your someone rear ends you today on your way home from work or your way home from church don't oh you necessarily anyway i don't know if if i'm explaining it well or not but some things are very clear and other things just happen because it's it's part of everyday life as god has determined it to be, but some things are life changing. Like what pastor John shared. I have had an experience like that. Maybe you've had multiple ones. I'd be interested in knowing. Uh, so I look forward to reading your comments. So behind me is the builder summit sign. I want to encourage you to consider going to the builder summit. It's a men's only conference. And it is uh, the fourth annual Builder Summit. The speakers are all related or on par with uh, Grace Community Church Doctrine, John MacArthur's Doctrine. Mike Abendroth went to the uh, Master's Seminary. He taught there. He's taught a few courses there over the years. He's an author. He's one of my favorite podcasters, No Compromise Radio. He's the main speaker. Matt Tarr uh, was on staff at Grace Community Church. He spoke last year. Looking forward to him speaking this year. And Austin Hessler is also speaking. He has uh, been there every year. He's a tremendous encouragement to us. He's a pastor in Ohio, and he also has a podcast on the BTWN Network. These three men are speaking for sure, and... It's only $200 to register, and with that registration, you get your housing, you get your food, you get the fellowship, you get the seminars, everything, everything, everything. Pocono Mountains, it's in the Pocono Mountains, and uh, it's beautiful. It's chilly. We have a bonfire every year, and uh, it is a tremendous, I, can't just, I just can't tell you how, how wonderful of a time it is. If uh, you would like to help, uh, well, <laughs> if you'd like to help, let me know. And uh, some people, unfortunately, can't make it this year, but um, there, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, I just wanted to let everybody know also that if you can't make it and you'd like to help sponsor it, someone to go, you can do that as well. Just let me know. Um, there's an article that I found about Pastor John's car accident, too. Anyway, I'll wrap it up. Today is July, no, July, August 12, 2022. You've been watching BTW News on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comment below. Hey, if you watch till the end, let me know if you watch till the end. It's always an encouragement. And uh, until next video. My prayer is that God would bless each and every one of you.